Mike Deutsch, Sling Birdies. We're at the Rice Athletic Center. We're going to be talking to Billy Mack. That's Bill McDonald, the coach of the men's golf team. He's a Taco Bell chowing, guitar playing, golf hitting fiend. And we're going to learn more about him. This is topical, so I have to ask you this first. Um, Graham McDowell just bowed out of the Olympics. I mean, that's falling on the heels of Rory McIlroy. We had Vijay Singh, a bunch of other top stars bow out. Do you think it was a mistake for the Olympics to go with pros instead of amateurs? I think golf in the Olympics, period, doesn't make any sense to me. Obviously, you're going to have pride playing for your country, and, and that's, that's a, a big part of it. But uh, golf being the sport that it is, these guys are playing at a high level and against each other every week. And, and um, I think when you combine the fact that in and of itself, golf – I don't think really fits in the Olympics to begin with. And the fact that the Zika virus and all the, the health concerns that a lot of these guys have, um, I don't hold it against any of these guys for, for withdrawing personally. Do you also think the field is going to be weak? Yeah, I mean, you're obviously going to have some, some big name players there, but I, I don't think when you compare it to what a, what a major is, or I think Rory or somebody was asked if they'd rather win a gold medal or the players championship. And, um, and most of these guys I'm sure would prefer the players championship. Uh, a 10-year exemption on tour and, and uh, all that goes with it. So, yeah, it's, um, it's maybe something in the, in the future they're going to have to look at tweaking a little bit, possibly even um, backing away from it, um, potentially. When people find out what you do for a living, like you're on a plane or a dinner party, do they often just stand up and do an air swing and say, can you fix me? <laughs> um, well, first of all, they, people, they'll, they'll say, is, is, coaching golf, is coaching college golf really a profession? Okay. That's the, the question I get a lot. Then they'll, then they'll say, uh, I guess you just play a lot of golf with your, with your guys, uh, which I don't. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I get, I get that a, a lot. I mean, people want – everybody wants help with their, with their golf swing, uh, especially after a couple of cocktails. So, yeah, um, yeah uh, free advice is basically what it's, what it's worth, and um, I'm always, always willing to give it. One of your players gets a visit from the Shankopotamus. How do you shake them off of that? First of all, there are three words you never say in golf, shank, yip, and choke. Okay. So we call it – uh, the Chinese pitch out. Yep. Um, we call it the funny shot. Okay. Um, but but there are a lot of ways to to the, the the most important shot after the funny shot or the Chinese pitch out is the next shot. Okay. And usually that's a big pull of some sort. But uh, no, you just you just try to make light of it, and not make don't make a big deal out of it. It's it's sort of like uh, you don't talk to the pitcher when he's got a no hitter going. You don't you okay. don't really bring that kind of stuff up either. You got a pra a new practice facility coming online. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's right you know right near uh, williams Bryce Stadium, so it's going to be closer, it's going to be bigger, it's going to be better. How much of a difference do you think that's going to make in you know, taking the team to the next level? We've already proven we can compete at a high level with what we have. It's, it's more the student-athlete experience. Okay. It's going to allow them to manage their time better. It's, it's also going to be a, uh, a wonderful place to practice just in general. So it'll, it'll be, uh, I'm, I'm hoping it helps us maintain where we are. I hope it helps us um, provide the student-athlete with a better way to manage their time. Having, um, having the facility being right off campus. And, um, and it's just a, an incredible setting. I mean, being right in the shadow of williams Bryce Stadium and, and all and near the Congaree River, it's, it's a beautiful piece of land. And I think it's just not only great for our, our program, but for our university. Will you be able to hit a ball into williams Bryce Stadium maybe as a stunt? <laughs> is, it, is it close enough to do so with, like a, with uh, a three-wood maybe? You might need a jet propulsion okay. of some sort. I mean, it's, yeah. uh, our guys can hit it pretty far, okay. but it's uh, – um, Plus, it's uphill to the stadium, so, okay. so that's going to make it play Actually, longer as well. Yeah. <laughs> are we on the cusp of a golden age of Gamecocks golf? I mean, the team's been doing really well lately, but are, is, is it, are we going to get better? Are we at an inflection point that, you know, going forward the next five years, this is going to be the best the team has ever been? Well, I, I hope so. Okay. I, it's, it's pretty incredible what we've accomplished the last three years, um, and I think we've set a standard that's um, potentially going to be difficult to, to maintain, but we've got some really good players coming in, and and, uh, and we've developed a little bit of a tradition here the last few years. So, um, so I, ho I hope you're right about that. So South Carolina is a ba uh, bastion of top of the leaderboard golf courses and golf programs. And we also got, you know, Coastal Carolina. We got Clemson, of course. Does that make it a double-edged sword when it comes to recruiting? Because even, like, the top guys in state, they have other options. Well, not only the state of South Carolina, but when you look at the entire uh, southeast, yeah, we, you're, you're right. It is a double-edged sword in the sense that we, we have a wealth of talent, but there are also a lot of, of uh, other opportunities for them to choose from from a, a, a college standpoint. At the SEC championship this year, 11 of the top 30 teams in the country were, were in the SEC. Uh, I believe 17 or 18 of the top 30 um, were a combination of the SEC and ACC. Okay. So that's the best golf basically being played in the country and in college golf. Now, 
the, the reflection of that is the, the, the amount of talent that we have in the southeast, especially on the men's side. So um, it just puts, puts more of a, of a onus on, the, on each program to, to sell what they have and, and to continue to develop their players. So it's a good problem to have. It's it, yeah, it's a high-class high yeah. headache. What's a week in the life of a college player like? Well, they're working out. They're going to class. They're going to study hall. They're trying to figure out how to do their laundry. Yep. Maybe trying to figure out how to <laughs> take somebody, uh, take a girl out to dinner. I sure. uh, got to go to a football game here, here there. Um, and on top of that, we have 20 hours of practice, with, which the NCAA allows us. So it's, um, it's more than a 50-hour work week. I'll put okay. it that way. Um, when, you, when you factor in all the class and study, the studying they have to do and, and everything else. So it's, uh, it's not as glamorous maybe as some people think, but it is a lot of fun. And, and it's, uh, um, I know the student athletes that have come through our program, are, are, they, they miss it when they leave. And okay. uh, even though it is a lot of hard work. Nowadays, golfers tend to be pretty jacked up. How grueling are the, the workouts for the Gamecocks golf program? And like if someone like myself who's not that in shape went to one, would I pass out in 20 minutes? Or <laughs> I'd give you 10. Okay. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Uh, it, we, it varies. The, the time of year that we're in, in, in the fall, we, we, we have a tradition of really trying to scare the freshmen into thinking we're just going to kill them okay. so that they, they come in and um, are in some, maybe somewhat decent shape. I had one of my freshmen convinced that we ran a half marathon at okay. the start of workouts, and yep. he, was, he was throwing up in the, in the waste camp before we ever got started uh, uh, that year. But it, it's, um, it's pretty grueling in the sense that we, we start at 6 in the morning, and we have, we have two or three workouts a week that are, that are pretty intense, but we, don't try, we try not to make our guys sore at certain parts of the season, but when we have some off time, um, they're really difficult, and, and they're intended to break them down a little bit so that, so that they, um, they can build back up and be stronger. And, and the, the, the thing you're seeing on tour now is, is these guys are, are really fit, extremely fit, but they're doing different kinds of workouts where they're not bulking up as much, okay. but they are getting really strong. I mean, uh, case in point, Rory's yeah. very strong. Do you think the Gamecocks are starting to peck at the Tigers as far as being able to, you know, make more pros, and will we see more Gamecocks on the PGA Tour in the next decade? Well, I think you will. I think you're already yeah. starting to see it with um, not only Wesley Bryan, but you've got, you know, Mark Silvers is on the web.com, Mark Anderson. You've got four or five of our guys either have Canadian Tour uh, status or Latin American Tour status. So you've got, we're, we're starting to develop a, at least a half dozen or so. Um, play, uh, Kyle Thompson's on the web.com. You know. Not, it's, not, it's not a matter of, of pecking away at Clemson. It's, okay. it's, it's providing every player that comes into our program, for the most part, wants to play professional golf. That's been their dream since they were kids. And so you just want to try to provide that opportunity for them through the college experience and prepare them as best you can. Uh, I think with our success and the, and the kids that we've, we've graduated the last few years, um, I wouldn't be surprised over the next five to six years if you don't see quite a number of Gamecocks um, at, the, at the highest level of, of professional golf. Um, outside of scoring average, when you're recruiting a player, what other golf analytics do you look at? Are you looking at different stats nowadays than maybe in the past, like 10 years ago? Like, are you looking at bo bogey avoidance, and are you also looking at putting strokes gained? Well, you, you bring up a good point there. I think with, with the, the stats that you have available to you now, or, or the, the, the emphasis on certain stats, I mean, the, what you see in, in college golf a lot, you don't, you don't often see the, the, the entire package. Like, like Matt Neesmith had length, great short game, incredible uh, uh, ability to handle his emotions, the, the total package, almost looked like a tour player in, in high school. That's really rare. Uh, usually in, in, in recruiting junior golfers, you're, you're either seeing someone with tremendous speed and length, and maybe their short game is a little bit off, or maybe they're a little bit off on, the, on the, how they handle their emotions. You might see a, a kid that's a real grinder, great short game, maybe not, doesn't have the length, and, and you're, you're trying to figure out which one is best to go after. So um, I, I, would say, I would say more than anything, the, the, the freak factor is what we look for. What are they best at? Mm -hmm. and, and, and then what are they, and then you compare that to what are they weakest at? And you try to, you say, you say to yourself as a coach, you try to project out, um, are they gonna grow? Which, which, can you enhance the freak factor and bring up the weakness? Uh, is, that, is that really the, the, um, you know, the, the aspects that you wanna look at? What's the craziest stunt a parent ever pulled to get your attention? I know it's technically against NCAA violations, but surely somebody's like, hey, look at my kid's swing, or um, you know, they'll send you videos and stuff. Like, wh what is it, anybody ever accosted you in a parking lot you know, to show you their kid's swing or something? And we're not allowed to talk to parents sure. at tournaments, but I've seen parents walk like three or four across a golf course to try to get my attention or to yeah. that kind of thing. Um, 
But, you know, for the most part, I, I, I have two, two sons that play other sports, and I would say for the most part, golf parents are, are uh, much more well-behaved than, than, yep. than some of the other sports that uh, are out there. I was going to ask you about some of the stereotypes, too. There's a stereotype that golf students are, I mean, golf, college golfers are smarter students than other athletes. Is that stereotype true, or are there some that are mediocre, too? Oh, it's all over the board. I mean, my team this year averaged 3.5 uh, three five GPA for the entire year, the best we've ever had here. Uh, normally, they're in the, the three O's, uh, above 3.0. But um, we've, had, we've had kids that really struggled academically as well. I mean, okay. I mean, I struggled academically at Georgia Tech. My first semester at, at Georgia Tech, I made a 1.3 okay. and uh, somehow barely graduated. Yeah. So, um, uh, you know, I, I admire these kids that come in here today and, and do so well academically because I, I actually really struggled with it. Um, one of the things that separates, like, real deal players from the hackers is they're able to bounce back from a meltdown. I remember Ernie Els in the Masters, the first hole, it was just the, like, it was like seven putts on, from two feet. It was like hard to watch. Um, how do you counsel golfers to keep calm and carry on after that kind of you know, meltdown on a hole? Well, when you're dealing with the testosterone levels that we are with the 18 to 22 year old male in, in college golf and the, the pressure that they feel to, yep. to play well to represent their school and, to, and just competitive nature in and of itself, that can be one of the most difficult things that we deal with. Um, okay. uh, the setbacks that you go through. I mean, now, now they, they typically get better with it as they progress in their career, but a lot of times their freshman and sophomore years, that's one of the main issues we deal with is just, is just they're so amped up and there's so much energy going on um, and intensity that that, that, uh, that that handling their emotions is one of the biggest biggest issues we, we have to deal with. What's the worst case of the yips you've ever seen in your experience as a coach? Like, have you seen like a seven putts like from two feet? Or? We don't say that word. Oh, okay, sorry. That, that's that's the one of the three yeah. words we don't, we don't okay. say. We, we, don't even, we don't even address it. We don't acknowledge it. It doesn't exist. Okay, we'll, we'll say apocalyptic golf scenarios. <laughs> what, what's the worst thing you've seen? I choose to, to, to okay, forget. Focus I, on, the, on the positive. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. I, 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 don't, I don't like to. Um, got, the game's hard enough without okay. focusing on the worst thing you've ever seen. I, I, would, I would prefer to talk about the best thing I've ever seen or, or something in between. But this year on the PGA, they seem to be, that seems to be the advertising headline that you know, this game is hard. And yeah. they're kind of showing you, like, when Jordan Speed messed up, like, hey, that's just like you. So it's more relatable? Yeah. Yeah. No, I understand yeah. that. I mean, yeah. uh, everybody hits bad shots. And go yeah. golf is an extra. Whoever came up with golf, some drunken Scott was, yeah. was you know, let's go out into a, 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 you know, where all the sheep are and play to some, some weird, you know, play, let's just keep hitting this little feathery ball around. Yeah. And I mean, how, they, how they came up with it, I don't know. It's, uh, yeah. I, I just think it's a crazy hard game. Uh, it is as rewarding as anything you'll ever do when you do play it well and hit those good shots. So um, I, I think that's the appeal that it has. You've held many different roles in the golf industry. Like, you know, when you're coming up, you know, you, you worked at you know, golf clubs, you were in an instructional uh, game. Would you say coaching college golf is the second best gig in all of golf? Uh, next to playing at the highest level? Next to, like, being Ricky Fowler, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say it is. It, it's... Um, there's nothing like the uh, the high of being with five guys that are playing really well. You 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 really feel like you've you're a part of the action, um, and the development part of it is 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 a great thing to be associated with as well. Um, it, it's also it's also really fun to be in a, just a college environment in general. I mean, mm -hmm. being at the University of South Carolina, going to the football games, the basketball games, doing the things that we baseball. I mean, the the whole environment here in, in the collegiate uh, arenas. Um, really unique and and the kids are just wonderful wonderful kids for the most part and, and a blast to work with and you could have gone the route where you'd be like a Hank Haney or somebody like would, 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 would you even consider that at any point like you know being oh like, yeah sure yeah I mean I, I, Hank Haney's a, sure. a me mega star yeah. uh, but charming those guys uh, I, and, I, and I still do I'm, I'm able to get out and, and, and get out on tour with some of these guys and I was just at the US Open last week oh, okay. with one of our players and the week before I was in Memphis with Matt Neesmith at the PGA event there so I've sort of got the best of both worlds. I can coach college golf, and I can do a little bit of the, the, the tour teaching as well. And, and uh, um, yeah, I mean, that's where my heart is, is in, is in teaching. So during tournaments, like, do you have any strategy of who you decide to follow around? Because, I mean, you could follow the, the star player, or you could try to, you know, bring up the, you know, the lower guy on the leaderboard. Mm -hmm. What do you tend to do in tournament situations as far as who you walk with? Mm -hmm. uh, we, we try to go over that in the practice rounds and even sometimes before we get to the tournament. The, uh, my, my philosophy has always been to try to walk with one player as much as possible, okay. to almost be like a caddy, to, to, to see if I can help that player save one shot. 
Sure. If I can do that, then I've helped the team. Um, and, and I'll typically go with what, like the past few years, I've just gone pretty much exclusively with Matt Neesmith okay. every round. I might bounce around a little bit. If I see something on a, on a golf course that the other players need to know, I might um, break off and then, and then come back to Matt or, or whoever I'm, I'm walking with. But, you know, it's a fine line there. Some players don't want you around at all. Okay. So, and some, some might want you there for every shot. So the last thing you want to do is 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 be, you know, overly aggressive and and and, and take on the the you know a, a player and try to help them when they don't want you there. Okay. You're better off get, just getting yeah. away. So we have discussions about that before they play and and um, what kind of needs they might might have or, or might not need anything at all. After Wes Bryan's first Web.com tour with George on his bag, they celebrated by going to talk Taco Bell. Did they do that as players too? Oh man, we love oh. Taco Bell. Okay. I, I'm I'm a big fan. Yep. So, uh, I have I have had teams that that would absolutely not go into a Taco Bell and sit in the van while while some of the, me and the other guys would would go go eat it, but or maybe go to another establishment while while we we went to Taco Bell. But that's a um, I, I love the fact that they go. I, I wish yep. I was with them half the time. And they said that uh, well, Wes said if you won the Masters, you'd make a Crunch Wrap Supreme like mm -hmm. the uh, you know the dinner next day. What, what would be your mm -hmm. uh, champion's dinner? From Taco Bell? No, for, for your, <laughs> from, 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 from your uh, whatever, whatever you want. For, what, your fast food of choice. Oh, uh, fast food of choice probably would be Taco Bell, but the, uh, uh, I would be a barbecue guy. Okay. I, would, I was a big fan of what Jordan Spieth served this past mm -hmm. year with the brisket. Um, I, it, would be, it would be pulled pork, brisket, um, probably some kind of pulled chicken. Um, not many sides, maybe, maybe, a, maybe a little bit of mac and cheese, but it would be mostly... It'd be a, a pretty much a meat fest, is what it would be. Our, our previous interviews, everybody's had a nickname. We did Tommy Two Gloves Ganey. We did uh, Jerry Flash Eighty Rice. Um, we did um, your fellow coach, um, Kalen Van Kalen Anderson. <laughs> what, what, what was that? Where'd that come from, Van Kalen? Because it just rhymes. Van Kalen. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I got you. <laughs> what, what, I got you. What was your nickname growing up? I've always been called Billy Mac. Oh, okay. Um, they called me Hollywood when I played. Um, football because I always took my helmet off to talk to the coach and the coach hated that but but my hair was always real thick and going everywhere and, yeah. I, and I'd look for every opportunity to to uh, take a sweaty helmet off so but I, I they, they called me Hollywood because I would take my helmet off and, and play with my hair but Billy Mack has always been my my, uh, my go-to straight from the mouth of a man who knows because he's been coaching for over 10 years